in a group of prisoners, there was a small sick boy who was the only male child in his entire family. You know how important it is for them. The male, you know, to carry on the family bloodline. Yes, so he was the only one in the family. His mother had followed the prisoners to Delhi. She had not been captured, I guess. Yeah, they capture everybody and the boy, but not the mother of the boy. And had gone in tears to the wife of the vizier, begging her to persuade her husband to plead with the king to spare her child's life. So this mother even knew the wife of the vizier. Vizier, I guess, like the prime minister. Yes. So the king said, I will set the boy free, provided he will say that he is a non sick Of course, then he would have an excuse. Huh? Or he didn't want him to be a sick believer. huh? A special body of God brought the boy before the king. And the king demanded in a very haughty voice, Boy, to save your life, you must declare yourself to be a non-sick. But at this, the boy cried out at the top of his voice, I'm a sick, I'm a sick. Then turning to the executioner, he said in a firm and resolute manner that brooked no denial, Sir, please be so good as to behead me at once. I do not wish my mother to suffer any more suspense on my account. He wanted to have it done with, so that at least she knew he died anyway. She would not suffer and worry whether he would die or not. That is also agonizing, you know, waiting, waiting, and doesn't know what will happen, if your son's going to be spared or not. This is a terrible thing for a mother to undergo. So he begged the executioner just to behead him and have it done with. So this is a type of faith that a Sikh, Sikh means disciple, huh? Okay. should have in his Sadguru. Sadguru means true master, eh? enlightened master. So that even if it is a question of his losing his life, he will still persist in his faith and devotion to the master. It is like that. And Guru Nanak said something like, A true disciple is without hope or fear. He who has no fear of death is a disciple perfectly harmonized. Yes. Well, it's easy to say. <laughs> But when it comes to life and death, we sometimes shock ourselves. Yeah out of uh, thinking whether or not we should go like that. When Jesus was uh, captured by the Romans, one of his disciples denied him three times. I don't know why he denied him. It's just the nature of human beings. When he was suddenly confronted with something that was going to annihilate the so-called existence that he knew, even though such a disciple like Peter, huh? Mm. should have known better. Maybe he denied it so that he did not have to bear witness against Jesus as well. Maybe he was not fearing for his life. Yeah? But if uh, the Romans heard, oh, I know this man, then maybe he would have to testify, okay, he is the master, the so-called master that you want to catch. So he rather tell a small lie I don't know him. Then later deny that he is a master or tell the truth and endanger his master's life. So I don't think that Peter really feared for his own life. I think he feared for his master's life. And in that situation, he rather tell a little lie, a white lie, to save him instead of having to tell the truth and harm his master. I think that's what it was. Wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. I don't think uh, a disciple 
with the St. Peter's status, would fear for his life. Don't you? No, no. 